Hello, my name is Mars, and welcome back to Beacon Pines. It's been a little while since I last played. I took a little bit of a break uh, because I wanted to do some other stuff, and then my computer broke, and I had to get a new one. Um, so uh, I, I have a fancy gaming laptop to play this cute little indie game, uh, and, and it's working great so far. So awesome. Um, Last I remember, we changed the weather magically, and now us and Beck are going to go find Rolo and be like a little gang of friends, as opposed to last time when uh, Rolo got really mad at us for not going to meet him right away. Um, before we could go to the treehouse, though, we overheard a conversation between our grandmother and Eris Valentine, and it seems like Gran is up to something very nefarious, uh, which makes sense considering that she froze us and Rolo to death, us being Luca, I do remember his name, she froze Luca and Rolo to death last time, so, uh, yeah. Alright, Beck, why are you looking backwards? There we go. We're gonna go to the treehouse. Should we go into the woods? No, we can't go into the woods. Okay. Uh-oh. For the last time, there's nothing to worry about. Oh, not... not these guys again. Of course, we're not worried. The clipboard finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Just dotting our eyes and crossing our T's. Well, maybe try minding your P's and Q's. Mr. Nuncreed, arms crossed over his paunch, gave an exhausted sigh. If there's anything you need knowing, you'll know it. Absolutely. If you'll just sign here, acknowledging everything is accurate, we'll be out of your hair in a flash. Oh, for the love of... He snatched the pad and scribbled his name so hard the pen nearly snapped. Now, I don't remember. Mr. Nuncreed had something to do with whatever secret facility is inside the telephone booth, and I don't know. There are the two factions. There are the Valentines, and there's... Oh god, the company that's currently in charge of the town, who the clipboards are associated with. And I don't know what t what side Mr. Nuncreed is on, so I don't know if this is an am an amicable encounter that we're overseeing. There. And would you like my eternal soul as well? The clipboards looked at each other for a moment, almost pondering the possibility, then broke into laughter as they walked away. Ha! Ha ha! Don't talk to that man, he's bad news. I wanted to talk to him. Hi, Mr. Nuncreed. Luca, let me give you some advice. The next time someone you don't know asks to hear your thoughts, give him a good hard bop right in the kisser. Oh, Gran tells me to just keep away from the clipboards. That's good, that's good. Your Gran is a smart lady, Luca. Speaking of which, you better run along home now. Too dark out to be wandering on your own. No, you creepy man, I'm going to the treehouse. I feel like the music's a little too loud. Better. Where was the treehouse again? The answers you seek will be revealed to you in due time. The question is, the figure intoned, are you prepared to live with the truth? Another day, another dollar. See you tomorrow, Z. Have you noticed how all the perennial harvest folk ordered the same drink? Decaf cappuccino with extra foam. Why? I don't know. Just thought it's a little odd. Pretty weird for sure. Well, the customer's always right. See you bright and early tomorrow. Oh, I can't wait. Let's check all the other side paths. Oh, the, the museum is lit up. Is it going to show me the same video again? Yeah, I don't want to see it. 
Um, what about back here? Nope. Uh, perennial harvest, that's what they're called. William Kerr and Gus Valentine proudly surveyed the half-covered festival banner. It's all coming together quite nicely. Couldn't have done it without you. The mayor gave a half-hearted shrug. I'm not so sure about that. Nonsense. That reminds me, I wasn't able to thank your sister for her contributions. Yes, she has been indisposed of late. She doesn't much like me, does she? Oh no, that's not it at all. She's just been busy. Of course. Regardless, I would be forever grateful if you could pass my thanks on to her. The History Museum adds a real air of import to the whole affair. And we couldn't very well celebrate the story of Beacon Pines without including the Valentines. My father was a great man. You're darn tootin' he was. Kerr locked his arm on Gus's shoulder. But I mean, the entire Valentine family. Present company included. Can I ask you something, Mr. Kerr? Call me William. Ask away. William, why are you doing all of this? Gosh, I've never felt one needed a compelling reason to throw a party. Not just the festival. All of this. There's gotta be a hundred down on their luck towns out there. Why is Perennial Harvest so invested in helping Beacon Pines? You know what I love most about the agriculture business? Seeds. Seeds? Yup, little bundles of potential. With a glimmer in his eye, Kerr gestured grandly toward the horizon. You treat a seed right, nurture it, feed it, and it can grow into something truly special. You see potential here? Undoubtedly. The seed of greatness is already under our feet. All it needs is a little nudge. And the right leadership, of course. Oh. Good night, Mayor Valentine. Bye, Kerr. Ooh, sign? Old Pickler's Pond. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, the treehouse is just a little further on from here. So what's your buddy Rolo like? Rolo? He's... Rolo. Not particularly helpful. Sorry, I've just never thought about it. Lots of energy. He's funny, even when he's not trying to be. Things have been tough for his family since the foul harvest. It's about damn time you tell me what this foul harvest thing is. It's a kind of long story. Hit me with the highlights. Okay. There used to be a fertilizer company here called Valentine's. They were kind of a big deal. Ooh, big deal fertilizer. It was a big deal to us. Their stuff really worked. Farmers loved it. So Valentine's grew and grew. Beacon Pines pretty much grew around it. Most everyone in town either worked for Sharper Valentine or used his fertilizer. Things were good. I'm sensing a big butt. Around six years ago, Sharper Valentine suddenly died. And something changed. Changed how? Could have been a bad batch. Maybe it was in the water or air or soil. Nobody knows. But all the crops died. And everyone blamed the Valentines. The foul harvest. Yeah. Valentine's fertilizer went out of business. Half the town lost their jobs. Sheesh. The next year the crops came back, but something was different. You plant a crop, do everything right, and it's sort of a crapshoot what happens. And no one knows why. Nope. I take it Rolo's farm got the short end of the stick? Yep, for some reason their farm was hit harder than others. That sucks. Things have gotten better since perennial harvest came to town. 
the Beacon Pines Reborn initiative? Yep. First thing they did was give the town a deep scrub. They even put us up in hotels, went town over for a week while they decontaminated the groundwater. Hmm. That's suspect. They probably contaminated it more. We better get going. Hey, Rolo, I brought a friend. It's about time. I was about to give up and go home. Who's the new kid? Name's Beck. You must be Rolo. Ooh. I see my reputation precedes me. Ooh. Welcome to Mission Control. Rolo waggled his head with pride. Ooh. You'll find we spared no expense in construction. I've seen worse looking piles of junk. Ooh. Thanks. Ooh. Hey, Luca, you know the security concerns we talked about? Yeah. While I was waiting, I made some improvements. Let me lock this baby down for a little test infiltration. Can't be too safe these days. Is it gonna shoot that plunger gun at us? <laughs> Why are you locking us out, man? I can't move, if you're wondering. He goes all out, doesn't he? Always. Lavish. Ooh. What do I do now? Talk to Beck? Nope. Oh, I gotta throw at the target, maybe? I kind of hit it. What am I supposed to do? That works. Just stand right up close to it. <laughs> Luca's aim is not the best. How many frosty cans you got in this dump? Children should not be playing around here. Where did you guys get all this junk in the first place? There's a guy in town named Jeff who trades us junk for snacks. Junk food for junk. Nice. Guess we're going on up. So, pretty sweet security, right? It was imaginative, I'll give you that. Luca, are we sure we can trust the new recruit? I'll vouch for her. Thanks, I guess. Oh, Luca, you promised to fill me in about the Valentine Warehouse. Um, so this is, yes, this is the branch where, uh, Luca went on his own. Because otherwise, Rolo would have been kidnapped. Luca sucked in a long breath. So, like I said, there was someone there. What were they doing? I don't know, but the place was lit up and active. Maybe they were squatters? I don't think so. It seemed more organized. When the man pulled me in, I saw some sort of equipment running. A man pulled you in? Yeah, but I got away. You keep saying it was a man. They were wearing a mask, right? Yeah. Then it could have been a woman. It could have been your grandmother. How did you get away? I grabbed a rock or something and broke their mask. They let go and I ran. Dang. That's intense. No wonder you freaked out when you saw your grandma. Yeah, that's the other part. On our way here, Beck and I saw Eris Valentine meeting with Gran, wearing the same sort of hazmat suit. Rollo let out a low whistle. And they weren't there for idle chit-chat. It was a proper clandestine meetup. So let me get this straight. There's an operation in full swing at the Valentine Warehouse. You were almost abducted by a strange man or woman in a protective suit. And then you saw your gran in the same suit talking to Eris Valentine? Pretty much. I'm beginning to think this town is kind of awesome. Rollo and Luca shot back a look. No offense. And so we can logically conclude aliens or alien zombies have infiltrated the town. And their leader is your gran, and she tried to murder you. First of all, and for the last time, there are no aliens. Second, it couldn't have been my gran at the warehouse. 
I broke that person's mask to get away. The mask Grand was wearing wasn't damaged. But she's definitely hiding something. Maybe. Your Grand is weird, but she might be the most boring person in the universe. All she does is sit around all day making jam. What should she possibly have to hide? I don't know. We haven't talked much since she moved in. Moved in? Your Grand isn't from here? No, she came a few months back to take care of me after... After his mom went missing. Did you know your Grand before? Not really, no. It had been years since I'd seen her. Luca, don't take this the wrong way. But are we sure your Grand is on the up and up? Luca gazed out the window. I'm just saying. It sounds like strange stuff has been happening since she showed up. We could say the same thing about your family. But you're right. Luca, your Grand is hiding something. And Pa always says, folks only bury stuff worth digging up. We need to investigate your house. If my Grand really is hiding something, don't you think I would have noticed by now? That's kind of the whole point of hiding something. I guess you're right. Grand's been leaving the house for hours at a time this week. I'll call you to two tomorrow when the coast is clear. And we can start getting to the bottom of this. I'm always game for a good snoop. You can count me in. Chapter 6 Secret Lair <laughs> Summer nice forged pun. ahead, but the nights only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. So I think in the game, two in the in the other branch, two days passed before the freezing happened. So that night at the treehouse happened when Luca didn't show up. Then he um he uh ruminated in bed for a day. He just pouted in bed for a day. And then the day after that, that's when the festival was and when uh Rolo did his whole apology riddle quest. Um Oh look. Uh uh Luca either changed his clothes or is wearing pajamas. How cute. What time is it? Oh, he changed. So we have some time, it would seem, before June happens. And who knows how Rolo disappearing in the other branches changed all that. Uh-oh, someone knocking on the door. Hello? Friends! Rolo, what on earth is that? Hmm? That ridiculous thing on your head. Oh, this? It helps me think. You're gonna need a lot more of those. Joke all you want. We'll see who's laughing when I crack this case wide open. The coast is clear? Yep, whatever she's been up to this week, it's been keeping her busy most of the day. Very well. The game is afoot. Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rollo strutted across the room. If I were a Gran, where would I hide my deepest, darkest secrets? Perhaps where you might least expect it. Rollo flung open the cabinet with confidence. Aha! Uh -huh. He coughed as a veil of dust hit his face. I think it's safe to assume anything that dusty isn't what we're looking for. Or maybe that's what she wants you to think. Then again, any good detective knows not to trust their first hunch. First hunches are for suckers. Eureka! She's lit a fire in order to burn the evidence. She keeps that fire going every day, Rolo. Drat, it may already be too late. Just think of the mounds of documents lost to Ash! Okay. I'm gonna stop you right there. Can we just think for a moment? Luca, is there anywhere Gran doesn't want you to go? Yeah. The closet upstairs. So maybe it stands to reason that we should check there first? No dice, it's locked. Well, well, well. Look who stands to reason now. 
And I have no idea where the key is. If it really is important, and she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? She has her berry bushes. Who has ever thought? I am going to take this important thing and huck it in a bush. True. Anything else? Maybe something out of the ordinary? Well, she is always worried I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen. But it doesn't matter anyway. I can't reach the latch. A look of realization crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. Stool form. Stool form, this bitch. All right, Rolo. This is your time to shine. Or just have the tallest kid do it. <laughs> ah, yes. You've called upon my expert detective skills. And now I shall proceed with... Before he could finish, Lucas scrambled up Rolo's back. Yes, stool form. Hey, this isn't my idea of detective work. Every squad needs a good lockpick. And every good lockpick needs a sturdy head to sit on. This is beneath my standing. Stop complaining and hold still. Got it. The three crowded around the hutch to peer in. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss. But the only distinct feature was its impeccability. Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah. I don't really know what we were expecting. Like, oh hey, let me just yank on this random teacup and- As Beck pulled on one of the teacups, it slanted forward with a hollow click. The entire hutch began to rustle and slide under its own power. Oh wow, your intuition is on point, Beck. Seems like your gran has been doing some remodeling. Dude, only two types of people have secret lairs. Evil masterminds and superheroes. So which one do you think she is? We're about to find out. Okay, so more of an unhinged conspiracist vibe? Oh, wow! Yeah, this cannot be good. We need to look around before jumping to conclusions. Suspicious barrels? What do we have here? Barrels marked caution explosive. And jam jars? That's enough jam to feed the whole town. What kind of incendiary jam is your grand making? Incendiary. She wouldn't have had me walk around town delivering bombs. Right? Only one way to find no, out. Casually spun open a lid and dipped oh his finger in the jam. Huckleberries? He smacked his lips. A hint of brown sugar? And? Ink? What? Rollo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Aha! Rollo offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. It's addressed to Mrs. Fratelli. A grand jam gram? <laughs> it says, Last night I used the disguise Eris provided to scout the location. The timing window should be possible. Operation Spark Plug is a go. Aw oh, man, are they doing a heist? Whatever it is, it can't be good. So more a bomb shell than a bomb, am I right? You're new here, so I'll let it slide. But I'm the bad joke guy around here. <laughs> this is... Despite all context, this is very wholesome. Just these three kids just being... Scampering around, being little rascals. I love it. <laughs> How many times I gotta do this before I get a, a charm? I would... You're the best around. No one's gonna ever keep you down. That's Rocky, right? I don't know what Rocky... What the song from Rocky is. But that's what I would sing if I knew what it was. A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town, interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. Well, she sure has kept herself busy. Uh, is your gran a serial killer? Because I'm starting to get a vibe. Don't be ridiculous. 
Sure, she's just tracking the movements of everyone in town out of the kindness of her heart. She put little symbols by some of them. Yeah, Mr. Nuncrete has a check mark. The clipboards are all inside a big circle. My moms are both on here. Both with question marks. Gus Valentine has a question mark. Eris has a question mark that's been crossed out. Uh, Mr. Kerr has a bullseye. The killer has chosen her next victim! We don't know what any of this means. Whatever it means, it's probably not good. I don't even have a starting guess as to what any of those symbols might mean. But Mr. Nuncreed had a check mark, so he's on her side. Luca jostled each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. He fingered through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. For a long moment, he just stared at it. What do you got there? It's my dad. Looks like some of his old medical files. Your dad was a doctor? Luca nodded and caressed the label with his thumb. Well, are you going to read it? I... Here, let me help. Rolo swiped the folder from the drawer and began leafing through the pages. He whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. How about you actually read some of it? One sec. Dense documents like this are a lot like a cheeseburger. It's best to skip straight to the middle. That's where all the meaty bits live. Wow. I had no idea we were in the presence of the preeminent scholar in dense documents. And cheeseburgers. By all means, proceed. He stopped at a page and mimed, holding up a monocle. Uh, here we are. Follow-up examination of Terence Wilby. Patient shows further signs of paleness and malaise. Body temperature continues to drop. He now describes soreness of muscles and joints. This is similar to the, ex the symptoms exhibited by Mrs. Wilby just a few days past. Still waiting on lab results from Joseph. Rolla looked up with heightened surprise. See, creepy. Yeah, that's kind of disturbing. Who's Joseph? That's Mr. Nuncreed's name. Wait. Rollo's finger traced across the page. There's more scribbled in the margins. Could it be contagious? Mr. Wilby claims to tap water at his home has been contaminated. Perhaps environmental? Lab results only raise more questions. It's like he came back to this report later and made those notes. So it might be related to something else. Rolo scanned through several more pages. Here, the writing looks shaky. I just couldn't help her. This disease, or whatever it is, progresses so fast. And with his wife passing, Terence's condition follows close behind, exacerbated by the loss. Enough is enough. I need to take matters into my own hands. Luca, staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. His father was the one who passed away. His mother just disappeared, right? What does it say next? Rolo rustled the folder, trying to lose more pages. That's where it ends. What? There has to be more! Luca frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Luca, I think that's the only one. It's alphabetical, see? What did he mean, enough is enough? How did he take matters into his own hands? This is bullshit! Luca slammed the drawer shut. Alright, this is calling our attention. They crowded around a worn-down old map of Beacon Pines. Cool, this looks like a treasure map. Not every old map is a treasure map, Rollo. Yeah, but every treasure map is an old map. Can't fault that logic. Look, there's even a pathway drawn on it. It starts at the entrance to town. And if we follow it... Rollo carefully traced the path with his finger. It leads right to... He jabbed down at the end point. Town Square? That's the fountain in the middle of town. What a weird place to hide treasure. Um... Rollo, that doesn't look like treasure to me. The end of the path on that map has the same symbol as those explosives over there. So it's not hiding treasure. Real bummer. Rolo, what's the thing you've been excited about for the past month? The festival. 
Gulp. Did you just say gulp? This feels like a gulp kind of situation. Everyone will be gathered near the center of town. She's gonna blow up the festival. Not if we stop her. Uh oh. Uh. What was that? Luca looked up from the map. What was the what? No, I heard it too. That was the front door. Which means someone just shut the door. Which means someone's upstairs. Shh, quiet. Hit the lights. Beck flicked off the light. And they became statues in the dark. Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. The kids looked up the tilt of their necks following each footfall. Then suddenly, it stopped. Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. Hello? This is one of the people that Gran gave a jam to, isn't it? A final few footsteps reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down the stairs. Uh-oh. Anyone down there? The three kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. As he began to descend the stairs, the man's voice punctuated every new step. Thump. Oh. Yoo-hoo! Thump. Oh. I'm not here to hurt anyone. Thump. Oh. Oh. I'm just here to help. Thump. Just thump. At the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. Oh. Huh. Oh, oh, oh. Guess it's nothing. Rolo shifted suddenly. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. Rolo, don't. It was too late. Rolo was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. Flaming chicken coop! With all his weight, Rolo tackled the man to the ground. Rolo? Mysterious creepy man? Anyone there? From the dark corner, they saw something move. Welp, I didn't know I had it in me. But there was only one way to find out. Holy crap, Rolo, that was awesome. Wait. Did you just kill that person? Luca scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground. Pressing his fingers to the man's neck, he sighed with relief. How would Rolo have killed that person? He is 12. He does not have a weapon on him. <laughs> what, what the hell do you mean, did you kill that guy? You sure clabbered him good, Rolo. He's knocked out cold. As Beck flicked back on the light, Luca and Rolo both gasped in stereo. Mr. Tolliver. Chapter 7. The Interrogation of Hiram Tolliver. <laughs> Fun. Still unconscious, Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. His hands were bound with rope, his feet tied with some loose string. The kids huddled in a circle, discussing their plan. One thing was certain. They couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. They needed to know what he was doing in Lucas' house. After some deliberation, it was decided. They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop, or hard cop. Eh, hard cop. Classic good cop, hard cop interrogation. They'd run the classic good cop, hard cop interrogation. Rollo brandished a steely gaze. I've got this. Read about it a hundred times. Rollo swaggered past the chair which propped up the slumping Hiram Tolliver. Without even looking at his captive, he began with a long, blustery drawl. Well, 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 Mr. Tolliver. Mr. Tolliver remained motionless. Rollo spun around to face him. He'd clearly expected to rouse Mr. Tolliver with his booming voice. Mr. Tolliver? Beck and Luca gave each other an unsure glance. Rollo slammed his fist on the table. I said, Mr. Tolliver! He grabbed the table lamp and beamed it onto the unconscious face. Mr. Tolliver groaned and slowly lifted his head. 
He recoiled with a muddled, weary squint. What in the world? The chair wobbled as he attempted to straighten up. Who? Who's there? Mr. Tolliver could only make out rough shapes through the glaring light. With a gruff tone, Rollo hoped to both conceal his voice and intimidate. I'll be asking the questions here. Now hold on, let's just calm down. Oh, I am calm. Calm as a carrot in dirt. As for you, looks like you're sweating. The doubtful expression on Beck and Lucas' faces transformed into awe. We can do this my way or... Well, let's just say I've never needed another way. Rollo, hitting his stride, was now channeling every detective trope his memory could recall. Is this man actually intimidated by this child? I I'm very confused. <laughs> he slammed the table again. Now dance! No, 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 no. What? I don't even- Mr. Tolliver's voice became desperate. He was nearly in tears. You've tied me down. How on earth could I dance? Dance with your mouth, punk. Spill the means. What are you doing poking around this house? I I'm here to help Juniper. To make sure everything is ready. Oh, so you're in coots with Gran? Gran? Mr. Tolliver was in a daze, now more confused than ever. Gonna help her blow up the festival, eh? Blow up the festival? Good lord. He shook his head, feeling more and more dizzy. No, no, you've got it all wrong. Where is she now? She's headed to the source. Source? What's the source? It's where... His voice faded to a whisper. The town began. Where it all began. What is Operation Sparkplug? With that, Mr. Tolliver passed out cold. Rollo swung around with a repentant grimace. Damn, Rollo. I think you went a little too hard on him. What did he say about the source? It's where the town began. We need more information. Yeah, but we better not push Mr. Tolliver any farther. Is there anyone else who might know more? What about the History Museum? It just got set up for the festival. Nah, that tent was put up by the Valentines. Everything they do is just a bunch of fluff to glorify themselves. Is there anything more reliable? The library? If there's any information about the source thing, Kaido can help us find it. Let's go get some answers. All right, let's see. Did it save? It's, it's not even 6.30 p.m., what the hell? Um, okay, um, so I think I'm gonna end it there. Uh, I kind of wanted to end it <laughs> as the chapter changed, but then it gave me a turning point, and uh, it was like, okay, I have to, I have to keep playing. Um, but yeah, we're we're getting back into the swing of things. I kind of worry that trying hard cop might have kind of made us get a little too much information. But Mr. Tolliver did pass out <laughs> from being so scared of a twelve-year-old. Maybe he couldn't see Rollo because the light was shining in his eyes. Is that what we were supposed to be assuming? So he thought it was an actual adult. A little hard for me to buy, but sure. It was it was a funny scene at the very least. Um, so yeah. I have been Mars. And I will be back with more Beacon Pines. <laughs>